By devoting just six minutes each weekday for one year, you can read through the entire New Testament using David Servant's daily devotional, Heaven Word Daily. Order your copy at heavenword.tv. Well, it's so great to be back together again, isn't it? As we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. And we're back still in Matthew chapter 24, just taking our time, working our way through the Olivet Discourse, all about the end times, really interesting stuff. I'm fascinated by it, and I don't get so upset about the things that I don't understand. Uh, I, I, you know, just, let my jaw drop. Uh, but the things I do understand, that motivates me, and I hope it's motivating you as well, to examine my life, to make sure I'm ready for whatever comes. And you might not agree with me because I've confessed to you that I'm uh, a closet, uh, uh, non-pre-trib rapture believer, and actually I've come out of the closet, and uh, you may not agree with me, that's fine. You know, I still love you, it's no big deal. But I would say this much, even if you don't agree with me based upon a theological conviction, it wouldn't hurt to look into it because if you're thinking you're gonna be beamed out of here before things get bad and it doesn't happen like you're hoping it's gonna happen, yeah, you, you might not be prepared in your heart and mind to stand during those perilous times that could be coming upon us all. Okay, so enough said. Now take a look with me in Matthew chapter 24. And uh, we read last time, we're finishing up in four verses about how uh, the, the coming of Jesus's, uh, the, the, the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus said, it's gonna be like it was in the days of Noah, when the flood came and caught most people, most people, by far and away, 99.9% .9 of the people totally off guard, and they were swept away. Had they contemplated and thought about what was about to happen and, and, and talked to Noah and got a little more insight from him, they could have gotten ready and they could have been prepared. And they would have been prepared by getting on the boat, the ark of safety. Uh, and so then Jesus uh, closed that section out by uh, making reference to these two men in a field. Uh, it, that's how it's gonna be when he comes back. Two men will be in a field, one will be taken, another will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one will be left. And, and sometimes it's hard to harmonize that with other things we've read. In fact, things that we've just read because we've read about, you know, there's gonna be, the, 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 the sun's gonna go black and the moon's gonna turn off and there'll be stars falling from the heavens. But those are just the final, final things. Those are the last things to happen. And so I don't believe there's gonna be two women grinding uh, you know, at the mill, uh, just calmly sitting there um, when Jesus returns. Right, you know, I can't imagine one saying, you know, here we are grinding, you know, pouring our grain in the, the grinder and turning our grinder. Hey, did you hear that the sun turned off uh, yesterday? Yeah, I noticed that. Wasn't that something? You know, never happened before in human history. Yeah, and the powers of the heaven are being shaken, and there's a sign of the Son of Man. Yeah, that's interesting, too. And by the way, did you watch the latest episode of our favorite soap? No, they're not going to be talking about that right at the time when Jesus splits the sky. But prior to the time when the sun goes dark and so forth, Although there'll be wars and tribulation and a lot of suffering around the world, there's still going to be some normality of life. There's going to be Christians that they'll be searching for, apparently during that time, who are going to survive. They'll be able to hide out and keep their location secret. And they won't be deceived by the reports of, you know, the, the Christ is here, the Christ is there, and they'll be listening to the false prophets, and they'll make it through, okay? So there's going to be some normalcy during that time. And I think these verses in indicate that real close up into the end, almost like the flood of Noah. People were just going about their business, and it started raining, and they kept going about their business. But as the rain kept going and the flood started rising, well, then they started to panic, okay? And so I think that when Jesus says that um, there'll be two men in the field and one will be taken, one will be left, I don't think he's talking about right at the very, 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 very end. There'll be two men in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. It doesn't mean they're actually going to be in that field at that exact moment, or the two will be grinding the mill, but maybe four or five days before, okay? And that's one possible interpretation. The point is we have to harmonize Scripture with Scripture. All right. So the whole message Jesus has, the overriding message in this passage, is found in verse number 42. Therefore... Be on the alert, for you do not know which day, which day your Lord is coming. So no one knows the day 
nor the hour. But when the sun goes black, we're going to know he's right at the door, as he himself said. And so now the remainder of this, of 24, chapter 24 and 25, it's the same theme over and over again. Make sure you're ready. And then some sub-themes come out. How can you make sure you're ready? What do you have to do to be ready? And another sub-theme. Is it possible to be ready at one time, but then to become unready at another time and miss out? And the answer is yes. Obviously, the answer is yes. Why would Jesus keep telling his closest disciples, his most devoted followers who are listening to him on the Mount of Olives, saying these things? Mark lists them as Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Why would Jesus continually, repeatedly, over and over again, almost to the point of, you know, just redundancy here, tell them, make sure you're ready, if there wasn't the possibility that they, who were ready right then, could have become unready. I, I don't think you can debate that. I don't think you can debate that. And I think that that becomes even more clear as we continue on here. Verse number 43, but be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour, didn't say week, didn't say month, didn't say year, at an hour uh, when you do not think he will. Okay, so this is not a verse that supports the pre-tribulational rapture because otherwise we might have a clue when Christ is coming back because in this very passage, Jesus gave them strong clues as to what to expect right before his return. And the whole phrase, you don't know the day or the hour, means that no one's going to know the day or the hour, even as that time approaches, but they're going to know when it's getting very, very, very close, okay? All right, stay with me, and we're going to talk about how we can make sure we are ready and always ready. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.